with all the indicators of cardiac health, one of the few indicators that tends to be overlooked is heart rate recovery. Although, it could potentially be one of the greatest indicators of cardiac health overall. So, what we're really looking at here is two things. One is, for example, we look at the chart off to my right, the line chart. We're looking at the omega-3 index right there. And that's along the x-axis. For those not familiar, that's the bottom line here. And we're looking at the heart rate recovery. As you see along the y-axis or the up and down part. Now, for example, the higher the omega-3 index, the faster the heart rate recovery. Per se, let's say, for example, you're looking at 25. That means, let's say, your exerted heart rate is at 100. So at 25, that means after one minute, your heart rate recovered 25 points down to 75. And so on and so forth until your heart rhythm normalizes. This is a really strong indicator of health overall is that heart rate recovery. And one of the strongest correlations that researchers have discovered, especially here, is the omega-3 index in the blood. So you see the association here, right here, the higher the omega-3 index, the faster or more efficient the heart rate recovery is. Now they took measurements at one minute and three minutes and five minutes and we want to get down into the second. So with that in mind, let's get right into the research as follows. Remember this chart right here is a heart rate recovery after just one minute. So let us proceed as follows. Bari publishes new research on omega-3s and heart rate recovery, Fatty Acid Research Institute. The investigators utilized data from 13,912 healthy men and women who had preventative medical examinations at Cooper Clinic in Dallas over a 10 year period. So this was a pretty long observational study. The examinations routine, they routinely included both treadmill exercise testing and measurements of the omega-3 index, i.e. red blood cell, EPA, and DHA, DHA levels from omega quant analytics. We're gonna go into the abstract real fast as opposed to the news release because it gives the data on the one, three, and five minute level. I'm not gonna read through each uh, segment of that data, but I'll at least lead it to you. So if you want to pause the information, and pause the information, pause the video to review the information, it's there for you. Quote, quote, higher categories of omega-3 index, O3i, were associated with greater HRR, heart rate recovery, at one minute. There's your data, three minutes and five minutes. Again, pause as needed. The HRR gradients across omega-3 index categories were steeper in women than men at one, three, and five minutes as well. So basically, women tend to fare a lot better with a little higher omega-3 index than the gentlemen do. But to proceed as follows, oh, before I begin, before I proceed, one interesting tidbit of information, if you look at the bottom there, it caught my eye as far as part of the research that's associated with this, is the DHA, a long complicated name in there that starts with a D, actually resulted in a correlation, I should say, in greater omega-3 index than the EPA did. Just something to think about. So when you look at a bottle of fish oil or plant oils or whatever it is, and you're looking at DHA, EPA, the DHA hopefully is there as well as the EPA, so a nice good balance there. But still, regardless of that, the DHA had a greater impact on the omega-3 index, according to that one little tidbit of information down below there, as opposed to the EPA. But to proceed as follows, previous studies have shown that a slow heart rate recovery is associated with increased risk for sudden cardiac death, which fits with a higher EPA and DHA levels being linked with reduced risk for sudden cardiac death. Not just the cardiac death, but also exercise well-being or exercise recovery per se. A lot of individuals, when they're running or jogging, often the first thing they do is are measuring the pulse, checking their heart rate, and obviously even correlation observation-wise, the faster the recovery, the greater the benefit per se. But to proceed as follows, quoting the researcher Dr. William Harris here. These new findings from the CCLS harmonized with the known benefits of omega-3 fatty acids on resting heart rate 
and provide new clues to how these important fatty acids can preserve cardiac health. Continuing to quote, these benefits on cardiac autonomic tone join other cardioprotective effects of omega-3 fatty acids, including the reduction in blood pressure, chronic inflammation, and platelet aggregation. To at least partially explain why omega-3s are good for the heart, future treatment studies should define the omega-3 index that optimizes this aspect of cardiac function. Now, what does that mean exactly? So let's say, you know, you see them doing everything from measuring, you know, triglyceride levels, cholesterol levels, so on and so forth. So how much additional effort would it be to say, hey, let's look at our patients here and say, look, let's check out your omega-3 index. If the omega-3 index is a little low, that's going to correlate pretty uh, strongly with basically reduced efficiency in heart rate recovery. So the medical professional might say, hey, for the overall general well-being and health overall, let's look at doing certain things to help increase your omega-3 index, as opposed to basically saying cholesterol, triglycerides, C-reactive proteins, so on and so forth. But what a beautiful, beautiful, eloquent, nutritional way to basically supplant, supplant, generally to improve an individual's overall well-being and longevity by doing something as simple as getting beneficial omega-3 fatty acids into the diet, getting that index up, and boom, heart rate recovery, a lot faster, great indicator for overall health, well-being, you name it, so on and so forth, reduction in inflammation, this, that, you know, you get the whole picture. It just is a great, great indicator of overall health. Again, I'll have the link to the abstract. Uh, hopefully, the full study will be published a little bit later on. So basically, those into biostatistics, data analytics, you can go through the methods and methodology. But it is there for you just the same. Great, simple information. Also, too, is a, basically a side note. Those that want to join us on Saturday, for example, look at the data analytics in reference to certain uh, current events, in this case, the pandemic. You're more than welcome to. It's a little detailed oriented, a little, you know, dealing with correlations and things like that. But however, though, in the first part of the research analysis, we cover the news in reference to basically anything that's groundbreaking or beneficial for the viewer to be aware of. But as always, gratitude. Thank you. I appreciate you being there. Take this information to heart. That you couldn't resist. And I look forward to you all once again, either Saturday or per se on Tuesday. Otherwise, just the same. Gratitude, thank you. See you all next time. See you next time. Bye.